EDC Las Vegas is only a few weeks away, which is absolutely bonkers. Like, where the heck did the time go? I swear EDC 2023 just happened. Like, I'm so confused. Time is going by so fast. But because EDC is only a few weeks away, I wanted to share some arrival tips and some general tips and what I think are must-knows for camping at EDC Las Vegas, specifically RV camping. I've only done EDC RV camping one year, but I've been to EDC for three years. If you don't know, EDC Las Vegas 2018 was my very first festival. Like I went all in as soon as I started raving. I didn't know. I didn't know. I didn't know. It was like, I saw the pictures, but I just thought like every festival was that big. But now I know it's one of the biggest festivals in the world. And I went to it for my first festival. Um, I also went in 2021 and 2023. Last year, like I said, was the first time that we went RV camping. And I just wanted to share some tips of what I learned when we first got there doing RV camping for the first time in a giant 30 foot classy motorhome, a huge rig. It was very overwhelming at first. And to add to that, we just moved into the RV. If you don't know, I live in an RV full time. It's officially been one year, which is absolutely crazy. But we were only living in the RV for about a month. So we were also still fresh. So fresh and so new into the RV life. And we decided... <sighs> Well, let's go full force and do RV camping at EDC Las Vegas. Let me share with you guys a few arrival tips and some general tips and must knows that you guys definitely, definitely should know before heading to EDC Las Vegas. We're going to talk about arrival first. I just have a few things for arrival that I wanted to share with you guys. One thing that really, really helped us stay as stress-free as we possibly could is staying up to date with like Facebook groups, Telegram, Instagram uh, groups, like group chats or Facebook groups or any type of groups that's specifically made for EDC Las Vegas. Most of the time people are going to post tips on arriving, when to arrive, when people start arriving, like the day of uh, EDC Las Vegas, most likely early arrival, people are going to tell you the best exits to take. If there's any road closures, if there's any roads that aren't RV safe, people are going to share their experience and because people are going to ask, most likely there's going to be a lot of posts that say, what's the best road to take? What exit should I do? Should I follow the instructions that EDC posted on Instagram and every other social or should I take another one? I would definitely, definitely recommend following people that have actually experienced in person in an RV going into EDC Las Vegas because last year we followed the map that EDC posted and it was absolutely madness. It was chaos. And guess what? They brought us to another road. Like there was a, um, like a digital sign that says RV camping, go to another road. I don't know if it was just a lot of traffic or what, but we followed the directions that EDC posted and that was not the best move. So after making that mistake, we parked at the gas station. We looked at the Facebook group, the EDC Las Vegas Facebook group, and we saw people said, don't take this exit, take this exit, take this road, go this way, it's a lot better. So we did that. If you saw in my EDC vlogs, there was no line. There was no line in security. I don't know if it's the route that we took or if it's just the time that we arrived or both. But after we looked at the Facebook group and we went the way that people said to go, it was smooth sailing after that. Another thing that I want to share is kind of like a two for one. Um, when you are ready to fill up propane, fill up your freshwater tank, dump if you need to, uh, fill up your tank, 
do it before you get close to the exit you are going to exit at to go to EDC. I would recommend doing like 30 minutes before you get to that exit, sometimes 45 minutes before, but you don't want to push it because you want um, as much of a full tank of gas as you can. So you can use your uh, AC all weekend long if you don't have hookups. Um, if you don't know, if you don't have hookups and you use your onboard generator, it uses the gas. When your generator is on, it uses the gas in your tank to run the generator to run the AC. So you need a full tank of gas, especially EDC. It is so hot. You need to make sure you fill up before need to <laughs> like it is so hot and taking advantage of having ac is a huge luxury and i want you guys to have that luxury when you're rv camping um even if you have hookups you never know if like say the power is going to go out you want to make sure you have that tank of gas so you can use your generator to use the ac i wanted to add to that real quick if you guys don't know where to find um propane where to um, dump your tanks, where to fill up your fresh water tank, use the app Campendium. It's also a website, but the app is a lot easier to use. All you have to do is make an account. It's free. Um, this isn't sponsored. I just love Campendium. Um, you just, you're going to start scrolling and it's going to tell you you have to make an account. You don't have to pay for anything. You do not have to have the pro version. You just have to log in. I think you can use like a Google account or just an email or something and um you put the area that you want to that you want to fill up and you want to find fresh water and it'll show you if you guys have any questions about like dumping your tanks your fresh water tank your generator your propane anything like that please leave a comment down below i'll definitely help you guys i know it is very overwhelming and stressful learning how to use an rv trust me i've lived in one for a whole year and i'm still learning things every single day it's a lot to learn so if you have any questions at all please leave them down below and i'll answer them as best as i can and the last thing that i have for you guys on arrival is to make sure you mark your location as soon as you park the rv don't party yet hold the parting until you mark your location so you don't lose your rv edc las vegas is packed like i'm telling you packed with rvs it was wild how many rvs there were i was i was speechless i really was i'm telling you like it was it, it's in my um, EDC vlog too. I forgot which one, but we did, um, when I'm like walking, you can see how many RVs. Uh, Christina went up on the roof and showed like how many RVs there were. And that was just the non-powered. That was just the non-powered area. It, pff, so many RVs. So make sure you mark your location so you don't lose your RV. All right, we are going to move to general tips and must-knows that I made a little list that I feel like you guys really, really need to know before doing RV camping at EDC. The first one is to make sure your onboard generator is working and the oil has been changed recently. It is very, very important to make sure your onboard generator works and your oil is changed so it works efficiently and it works in general. Your onboard generator powers your AC, it powers your like your, the outlets that are um, like on the wall, it powers your microwave. That is your electrical source, that is your power source that needs to work especially to make sure your ac works rvs get hot and at edc it was boiling we had the ac on all day all day and as soon as we turned it off it got so hot in the rv it was crazy so make sure that your onboard generator works and your oil has been recently changed i don't know if all onboard generators are the same 
but for hours checking the oil is really easy it's literally like checking the oil of a car so you take like the stick out put a paper towel on the stick put it back in take the stick out and then you can see the level of the oil i also wanted to say this goes for people who have hookups too because like i said earlier you never know if say the power is going to go out if it does, you want to make sure that onboard generator works so you have a power source. Okay, <laughs> we are going to talk about bathrooms. <laughs> Everyone's favorite topic. I will go through this fast because I know a lot of people don't like talking about it, but it's important. It's important, I promise you. First thing, don't put toilet paper in the toilet, in the tank. Don't flush the toilet paper in the toilet like a regular toilet in a house. You wouldn't believe it, or maybe you do, but toilet paper fills up your black tank way, way faster than just not putting toilet paper in there. You would be surprised how much it fills up your black tank faster when you put toilet paper in the toilet rather than just having a tiny trash can in the bathroom and I know a lot of people <laughs> are going to say it's gross, but it's going to help, especially when you have a huge um, group of people in your RV and you don't have hookups. I don't even know if EDC has sewage for their hookups, but if they don't and you also have hookups with no sewage and then you don't have hookups, your tanks are going to fill up fast, especially with a large group of people. So... I would just recommend to not put toilet paper down the toilet. I know it's going to feel weird to put your toilet paper that you just used and put it in a trash can, but trust me on this, you won't have to pay the crazy $200 or something that EDC um, offers to um, go to your RV and dump your tanks. So trust me, for one weekend, just put your toilet paper in a trash can. <laughs> and second one, if you are going number one, you do not need to have the water pump on. This goes for if you don't have hookups. If you have hookups, and like I said, I don't know if EDC, if sewage is um, included with hookups, but either way, you don't need the water pump on if you're going number one. You really don't, It again, it fills up the tank a lot faster when you really don't need it. You need it for number two, but you don't need it for number one. I promise. <laughs> and one more bathroom thing, get a bottle of hand sanitizer and just use hand sanitizer for most of the weekend. I know you have an RV and it's gonna feel really good to wash your hands every single time you go to the bathroom that you're not able to do with a porta potty, but you're camping anyway. And your um, bathroom sink goes to your gray water. And if you're doing dishes, you're using your fresh water tank for drinking water, you're taking showers, um, and you're washing your hands, that gray tank is gonna fill up really fast. So just enjoy the camping weekend and the luxurious camping life and buy a bottle of hand sanitizer and just use that after you go to the bathroom. And what we usually do is we have a one a day rule. So we get to wash our hands once a day and that worked out really good. We only filled up our uh, gray tank to about two thirds after the weekend was done. So I feel like we did a really good job. Okay. Okay, enough bathroom talk, okay? That was it, that was it. I just wanted to share those because even with EDC and an entire year of RV life, those are the top three things that have helped us a lot with not filling up our tank so fast. But okay, that's it, that's it. Let's go to the next one. Battery powered fans. I'm gonna say it again. Battery powered fans are the best. Best. I'm going to put my favorite battery powered fans in the description below so you can just click on that link if you want these but I'm telling you I have tried these and these are my all-time favorite battery powered fans 
even if you have AC, there are going to be certain parts of the RV, especially when you're trying to sleep or if you're just hot with the AC, battery powered fans will help a lot with the circulation and just keeping you cool, especially at night. I don't know about you, but I love to be like cold when I'm sleeping. Like I love to just have a bunch of blankets on me and feel like the weight of blankets and just be like cold when I'm sleeping. So battery powered fans help a lot, especially in our RV. The back of the RV, which is the bedroom, and the top bedroom area, which is like the top bunk above the driver's seat and the passenger seat, those areas get so hot even with the AC on. So having battery powered fans, especially if people are sleeping on the top bunk, people are sleeping in the back of the RV, if the RV you have or the RV you rent is the same way, battery powered fans are amazing. Next one I have is to learn how to put your jacks and your stabilizers down. Whether you have a travel trailer, a fifth wheel, um, or a motorhome, it is very important to learn how to put your jacks and your stabilizers down. EDC can get windy like windy windy we've heard it over and over again that EDC can have a lot of windy nights and I think windy days but the only thing that comes to my head are the nights get super windy if you've ever been in an RV while it's windy you're like going like this <laughs> It is crazy how much they sway. It's actually pretty crazy the past few days. Um, I'm in Colorado now and the past few days we've had like 60 miles per hour, maybe more, but it's been like intense, intense winds and our RV has just been like rocking. Even with the stabilizers down, it's been rocking. But the first um, night of like the crazy winds, we didn't have the stabilizers down. And then the next day we put them down and we felt a huge difference. But yeah, it's very important not only to make it feel like you're not on a boat. Um, it's also very important for your safety. It is very, very, very important to learn how to put these down. I want you guys to be safe. And when you have your jacks down and you have your stabilizers down, it keeps your RV a lot more safe and sound than not having them on the ground. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Next one is water. Stay hydrated, everyone, please. And with hydration comes a lot of water. So please, depending on how many people are going in your RV, buy at least 10 to 20 jugs, like I think they're one gallon jugs of water to have in your RV for people to drink. If you just rely on your fresh water tank for drinking water, your um, water is going to empty fast and you're gonna run out of water very, very fast. And you want that fresh water tank to last. So you can use it for dishes, brushing your teeth, washing your hands, going to the bathroom. <laughs> I had to bring that up again. <laughs> um, showering. Did I say showering? You want to make that fresh water tank last as long as you can. I have one more, one more tip for you guys, and that is to bring any type of dark colored blanket or just blackout curtains to put on your windows in the RV. If you don't know, EDC is dusk till dawn, so you go to sleep when the sun is already up, and you sleep during the day, and if you're anything like me, if there's light out, it's really, really hard for me to sleep, so make sure you bring um, blackout curtains or just a bunch of blankets or a bunch of tapestries to cover the windows so you're able to sleep when that blazing summer sun is going right into your RV. That is everything that I have for you guys. Whoever is going to EDC, whether it's this year or another year, please have fun. 
do some rides, go on the rides. They're so much fun. Explore new artists, explore in general, take your time, take lots of rest, hydrate, make new friends, and most importantly, have fun, let go, and be yourself. EDC is literally, oh, it's so fun. I love EDC. I love the people there. Everyone is always so nice, and it holds a special place in my heart because it was my first festival and even after three years of going i would go back again because it's seriously such an incredible festival it's something you will never forget so anyway have fun at edc guys don't forget plur take care of everyone take care of yourself eat lots of healthy foods i'm being a rave mom right now but <laughs> just Take care of yourself, others, have fun, stay hydrated, and just have a good old grand time at EDC Las Vegas. I'm so excited for you guys. Please tell me in the comments whenever you're done with EDC how it went, what was your favorite part. I would love to know. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.